Hey guys, I'm dying, but are we all? I have an estimated lifespan of 35. And the reason for that is I've had multiple traumatic brain injuries. Um, my first one was a severe traumatic brain injury and it um, shortens your lifespan pretty drastically, but I've had a lot of brain injuries, um, but actual like surgery, brain bleed, brain injuries was three yeah. so far. My, yeah, my first one since 2012 was my main, the severe traumatic brain injury. Then following that, I began having seizures and passing out, having limited strength and mobility and issues like that but then that led to even more issues of me falling and cracking open my head or whatever and leading to more brain bleeds and more brain injuries so um the thing is is i have accepted that i'm gonna die like quicker than the average human which is me i am the perfect human i hope hopefully i do die first because i don't want jc to die but because i wouldn't be able to live with that you can live you can live i can die yes no, you can. i will die Shh, don't cry don't cry it's okay <laughs> okay i'm sorry i'm sorry we're not talking about that okay so i've accepted it um she's also accepted it so it's not that it's non-emotionalist now, like there's emotion there, but we choose not to like focus on it because it's like, it's just part of everyday life now. Yeah. And so, you know, my choice is to, what was that? <laughs> Damn you notification. It was just computer notification. Yeah. Okay. So where was I? Uh, we choose not. Yeah, we choose not to focus on the <laughs> So we choose not to focus on it. Um, it's not that we like don't know that it's like a thing. Like it's not like that we don't know that it's gonna happen. That we aren't per like I couldn't say like we're prepared as in what we would do um, in like a physical response, like what would happen to a lot of the responsibilities, but. For the most part, it's like emotionally, you can't really ever prepare or prepare for that. But we choose to not. Yeah, so we've accepted it. Yeah. Obviously, there's no like being prepared to die. Not even at a hundred, not at twenty, not you know two weeks from now, not sixty years from now. It's something that you can't really prepare for. So it's not that just because my lifespan's shorter that. I need to like prepare, which I mean, a lot of people say that, like that you just need to accept it and prepare, like prepare yourself. Like you're gonna, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. You know, you may be in a lot of pain, you may suffer, whatever it is. And then, you know, you'll, you'll prepare yourself ahead of time. But that just doesn't happen because like, I thought, you know, possibly that I would be like prepared for that type of stuff, but, um, an example of that is um, thinking you're prepared and then when it actually happens, um, JC was present and this, it was the third, third time from now, intubation? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, with my seizures from my brain injury, I have pretty bad seizures sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> a lot of times. Well, I mean, sometimes as in not every day, but... Like, let's just put this into perspective. Just because you have seizures and then I'm like calm around them doesn't mean it makes it any less scary to me. She's scared of me. I'm not I'm scared, scared of you! Me. I'm scared of like something bad happening to you. So, you know, 
JC as a caregiver has like a whole different side of you know emotions and um, you're basically going through what I'm going through just in a different way. Yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in like the pain as in like any physical pain, but like it, it takes its toll emotionally for sure. Like, yeah. Um, there was this one time that you were getting intubated and you were having really bad seizures. Um, they were gonna call like code blue on you because your heart rate was fluctuating so high. They were afraid you were going into cardiac arrest. Um, was that the time it was like one nineties, two hundreds, something mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. And um, it, I think they also gave you central line that day. I don't remember. Maybe, yeah, it was, it was, yes. was that I had that video. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So then you had gotten your central line and they started getting the fluids in you, but it wasn't stopping. So, um, because they were afraid of you having a heart attack. It's a medication. Or yeah. What, uh, cardiac arrest, so they were going to like intubate you. And oh, I was status epileptic that day. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. It yeah. was. Because I, I recently shared that video. Um, it was scary. I was leaving with Colt because they were gonna, uh, what was it, intubate you. And before I left, you know, I told you I loved you and you said you loved me. And then you like grabbed my hand while I was starting to walk away and you like looked at me and you were like, Am I gonna die? And I, I like tried so hard to like, it was really hard for me because I didn't, I didn't really know. But the last thing I wanted you to see was like smile and have hope. And so for me, it was, um, I was like, oh, we're going to be fine, I promise. And making empty promises like that, it, it sucks, but I just, I felt like what she needed to hear was, um, like, good, good spirits. And so yeah. I told her that, and I remember her smiling, um, and then she started crying and said, I don't want to die. Um, I was like, we'll be fine, I love you, no promise. And then I left the room, and... I waited for them to completely finish intubating her, and I had Colt, who's really well behaved, just like laying right next to me. And, um, that was really hard for me, for sure. I'm sorry, you're gonna <laughs> make me cry. Oh. <laughs> um. So that was one of the many times that I was dying from my health issues. Um. You know, not uh, not one of the bigger times, like when you know you have a brain bleed that's like instant. You have to go into surgery, or you're gonna die. Um, but status epilepticus is very serious, and um, basically, what that is is it's when a seizure lasts more than five minutes, or your seizures cluster which is like you have another seizure before one is done um so like you're never coming back to consciousness um so longer than five minutes you're having lack of oxygen your everything in your body's depleted um to the point of like extremely dangerous levels and stuff so the day that she's talking about um i was like 30 minutes status epilepticus like I was it was pretty bad um and the doctor was trying really hard to uh you know she was ordering EJs and stuff like that and it just wasn't working so she EJs sorry is a external jugular I think is what they call it is the vein right in here or artery right in here um and they put an IV in that because I barely have any IVs in the rest of my body. So Bill starts and stabbed me like 40 something times or whatever. It's a human pin cushion. A human pin cushion, that's a good way to describe it. I sure feel like that sometimes. <laughs> um, sometimes they still try and I'm like, why are you trying? But depending on how sick I am, when I'm really bad, there's no getting it. It's like you're being to playing like hide and seek. Seriously, <laughs> playing hide and seek. But it's true, like, that day it was like they tried EJs and everything and nothing was working. They even so did ultrasounds, remember? Yeah, ultrasounds for EJs and EJs and everything. And then the doctor actually came in herself and started a central line in um it's basically considered a you know, procedure, like sterile procedure in a trauma room. 
and started, to, I was already in the trauma room though, but um, because of everything that was going on. But yeah, they basically had to get a central line, line because they were trying everything and they couldn't give me seizure medication without just like giving me a shot or whatever and they couldn't give me you know potassium and all the stuff that I needed and fluids and all that um, so started central line and uh, that was kind of like a last-ditch effort to try and help me so I was already at the point of pretty bad yeah. um, but looking back at the video which I'll link that in the description because I think that might be helpful to some people um, obviously not all of it's in there because it would be a very long video but <laughs> and there's just some things that you can't or don't video but um, yeah the, I'll link that in the description but that video it will show like I'm pretty drugged up in that video like pretty drugged up oh yeah they they have like tons of uh, different kinds of anesthetics and uh, anesthetics. sedation it was like sedation medications and stuff anesthetics I don't know if that's the right word it's anesthetics uh, uh, like the, no, they had to not. numb you in that area while they were doing. Blood. Oh yeah, I don't think that would affect me like cognitively though. But I was so I was like super drugged up, mm -hmm. um, because I was pretty much I was pretty much like maxed out on seizure medication. So it was just like a kind of really scary situation. Yeah. And then, um, pretty much while she was finishing the procedure is when. I went into like code blue type status. Um, yeah. Yeah, she spent. No so time I honestly. Getting what'd you say? She spent no time getting you intubated after that. Yeah, that was. I I don't remember that exact part. Like I remember when she was like, uh, and even in the video, probably that's probably why I remember it so well is because I have the video to be able to go back and look at it. Um, but normally when stuff like this happens, it's really hard for me to remember anything, really. Like, I'm pretty out of it. Yeah. And unless I have, like, a reminder. <laughs> unless I have an inside joke going on over here. Um, unless I have a reminder of pictures or videos, I really don't remember much. So, that video helped a lot, but she was talking about, she even talked about in that video, the doctor was... Uh, talking about the central line and everything as she was walking step by step, which I've had many central lines. But I'm normally so, like I'm asleep. Like I'm not even awake when they start them. Like I'm either ending a seizure or whatever and they're starting central lines or I'm like going into surgery or something. So I don't even remember it. So that was pretty cool to be awake and like have her explain stuff to me and then have it on video. That was really nice. She was a great doctor. Yeah, she was awesome. Um, but yeah, she uh, walked me through it and everything. And I think she was talking to another doctor or something on the phone and she was talking about um, saying that I wasn't intubated yet and then she said and hopefully not she like turned around to like reassure me do you remember that um, because she realized like she was talking on the phone in front of the patient and the, yeah. the probably like upset me or something which I didn't quite I don't think I registered it until she like said and hopefully not um, because I was in such a severe situation I probably should have already been intubated well, I think I was just fighting really hard. I don't know, but uh, then well, you're she... also really confusing because the doctors say like you have these seizures, and then you come back and you're like fine for like 10, 15 minutes, and then you just go back into like horrible seizures again. So it's a really hard call for them. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll have clusters and clusters, and then sometimes I'll have a break in between, mm -hmm. and then have more clusters. Yeah. And so when I was like 30 minutes status up left kiss, that was 30 minutes of seizures. I mean, that was with her, with the ambulance, with the hospital, like no coming conscious. Mm -hmm. And so they were, it was pretty scary. Yeah. And then, um, which obviously I don't remember that part, but waking up to dealing with all that, sometimes pretty scary. But then um, even subconsciously, even though I think I'm prepared or whatever for death, subconsciously, obviously, I'm not because I don't remember saying that to JC, but JC was crying about it um, to me the next time we actually were able to talk and I didn't end up dying, which, you know, thank you, Lord, I'm here another day. Mm -hmm. And I am thankful. Um, I have accepted that I'm going to die and I could die even before 35 because seizures are 
um, there's a high chance of death with seizures, especially like uncontrolled seizures. So um, it's not something we want to focus on, though. Like we try to make each other laugh all the time, and I mean, even though there's serious stuff happening. It's not that we don't care. We just, like, it's everyday life. It's something that's gonna be there whether we're upset about it or not. So we might as well spend the last time that we have together um, happy and joking yeah, and, it's positivity. yeah, and well, choosing I mean, joy. And, you know, it's not, it's not, like, easy. Like, I have days where I'm in, like, so much pain that I just wanna, like, hate the world. and. Honestly, that's obviously not a good outlook on life. I just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, that's not, like, the best outlook to have on life, for sure. But it happens. We're not perfect. We're going to have those days. But, like, we try to the best of our ability to be happy and cheerful. And to, like, if you... If you only have so much time left to live, you might as well, like, live it good, right? Like, not waste time worrying or complaining or whatever. Yeah. You live it to the best and the fullest you can. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time doing things that, um, you know, people are like, you're in a wheelchair and you did what? Or you have seizures and you did this? Or... You know whatever whatever it is and it's not that I like to live dangerously like on purpose trying to like harm myself or have another brain injury but like I've had other brain injuries from falling from a standing position so like whether I'm just standing there or I'm riding a sea do or, or going skydiving I could get hurt either way like why just be boring or it's just like why why live in fear? Yeah. And say, Oh, I have this limitation so I can't do I can't enjoy life to the fullest. That's not that's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's totally true because like first of all, I'm extremely lucky to have Colt because without him I wouldn't be alerted ahead of time and there would be a lot more injuries than like a lot. With how many I have multiple seizures and pass out spells a day. And on bad days, I have way more than that. So imagine every time not having an alert from a dog letting you know that you're going to do that. So that means you could be doing anything. You could be in the bathtub. You could be in the shower. You could be cooking on the stove. You could, you could be... have a butter knife and a uh, toaster. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could be riding a bike or something like that and seriously hurt yourself. And yes, I've gotten hurt um, a few times since having him. But... Compared to how many times he's alerted me, that's... So, like, before you got cold, um, I think you stopped having, like, seizures for, like, a couple of months, right? Yeah. And then you they said, said when the... Seizures. Yeah, they said when the, the scar tissue started forming is when it all just went to crap. Yeah. And so, you stopped having seizures for a couple months. Because I remember a couple months of, you know, you weren't having any seizures... Um, and then you got caught for basic mobility because you've always had issues ever since your accident, like mm -hmm. being able to grab things, bend down, yeah. um, and then open and close doors yeah. and all that. As you're treating for that, you realize that he like got like kind of weird and needy, and then you start having seizures. Again. He got he got pretty crazy. Like we almost got rid of him because we thought he was gonna knock me down or yeah. He was barking and craziness, and we didn't understand that that's what he was doing. So he was and then, seizures. yeah, and then finally we realized that um, took us a while to put two and two together. But yeah, he. I think it was like a couple of months. That you, I remember it was like two me. months. Yeah, it was like two months. The first time he did it, I remember you calling me, and you were like, "Oh, cold acting weird," and then. Yeah, and it was weird because and I was so well trained by that time. Yeah, and then you were like, we "We're like, what's wrong with him?" You're like, cold acting all weird, and then you hung up with me, because I was like, oh, maybe he's just having a weird day or something, and then uh, you hung up on the phone, and then you called me again, and you're like, first I was up, and I was doing something, and then I woke up, and I was on the floor. And that you were like, wow, because like, what were you doing on the floor? You had no idea, but... 
Mm-hmm. Imagine if that started up before you got cold. Yeah, even more confusion and getting, yeah. Uh, you know, I did get injured a lot before I realized that he was learning. Realized that he was learning, um, and before I had him because I did have seizures um, in the beginning of my traumatic brain injury. I remember that. But I was mostly in the hospital um, during the inpatient rehab and stuff. But uh, so that was much safer, obviously, being in a hospital setting while having seizures. So you're not I mean, walking you were around. Risk, yeah. yeah. Um, did they ever make you an MPO or no. in the hospital? Yeah. There was a lot of times so I was MPO. You're always MPO when you go to the hospital. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't I just need my candy? <laughs> you don't remember that time where you just finished getting a pad of your intubation and there's a banana, but you weren't allowed to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you bring the banana? Oh, the banana was just sitting there. But oh, they, they forgot sitting. to take it away. And your MPO. Oh, of course, I'm gonna seizure. eat the banana. And then you were like, I was like, hey, and you're like, I'm MPO, but I'm hungry. And I'm like, oh. And you're like, is that a banana? And I was like, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> and I'm like looking oh, okay. out in the hall. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I got extubated. Um, and it's a banana. I'm not eating like, like something crunchy. I thought that was so funny, and then you were like, well, someone walks in, I'll throw it to you. <laughs> yeah, she's eating banana, not me. <laughs> hey, this is this is real life, people. Like, yeah. when you're in the hospital all the time, come on now. Like, I already deal with enough. Don't take away my food. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the banana going to do, really? Mm, don't make my stomach happy. Exactly. I mean, if you throw it up, that's fine. You're going to have potassium absorbed anyway, right? Mm, yes. Very positive outlook on throwing up. Yeah, there are times that I throw it up. You know what? If I think it's worth it, I'm going to do it. Okay? <laughs> if I want to eat that banana and then I get nauseous and throw it up later, who cares? I was happy I ate the banana. I just thought that was like, that was so funny. You just got <laughs> extubated. They had you in PO. I was like in PO for like, like, that wasn't the same time though, right? We were talking about a different intubation. Yeah, it was a different intubation. Okay. But I was like in PO like three days before that mm-hmm. that intubation, and then I was like not eating the like what two days I was intubated, three days I was intubated, whatever it was. Yeah. And then take and then there's a banana, and they, they expect me not to eat it. <laughs> hey, I know I was in like coma land, but when I wake up, I'm hungry. Yeah, like, let I me have a banana, banana <laughs> now. <laughs> so, um. But yeah, they're normally pretty nice though, because they'll like try to take me off NPO as soon as possible. Yeah. Because like, you no, know, that time that's hard. Come on now. Kind of mean. Which that which time? time? The oh, the banana time. time? Yeah. Is that what's telling you to watch out in the hallway? Yeah. Sometimes I don't remember these things, but it's hilarious. Yeah. So, so if your story <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like you know, showering me and stuff. That oh was yeah, very that's fun. so funny. <laughs> I don't actually remember that, really? but I do remember trying to Your parents text were there. you. Really? Yeah. Um, at the point in time, I think before you got there, or yeah, because I got there when your parents were there. Mm. Um, but but I, they had been there a lot longer than I was, because they were getting ready to leave out. But then you were like, but that was like two weeks in my hospital yeah. stay. I was like there for two. Yeah, weeks and then weeks I went there. to help you to get up, and you were like, oh falling around you're looking so at everything. I had I had um I'm forgetting the term now term now nystagmus I think where my eyes were shaking um yeah I was messed up yeah like I was so messed up they ordered like an EEG on you yeah they do that, that a lot. Was, when that I was have really time. long hospital stays yeah. they do that yeah that was that time that you had the EEG <laughs> in your head and you had all the concrete and stuff and I went to go help you to the bathroom and you're like, oh my God, it, took you like it took you like like two different tries to get my hair brushed through mm-hmm. it took two hours the first time just to make it look like I look like a human not an alien <laughs> yeah. I look like a little troll doll that that was like left out in the yard <laughs> and, and, got and then the it. dog got to it that's what my hair looked like it was bad it was yeah it was that time bad. was pretty bad like two weeks in the hospital with concrete stuff in your hair and like matted oh it was horrible mm-hmm. um but they she caught some of your seizures though what did you say they caught some of your seizures on the EEG. oh yeah because it was a long time yeah a long yeah. period of time it was good 
but man, then there was, so then there was the fact that I was letting the nurse shower me or something. You know, I what? see, I don't even remember you this. You didn't but. want to be showered by the nurse. But you needed to shower. Obviously, I probably stunk really bad. <laughs> and then the nurse is all like, you know, she's fighting me, and and I'm like, and I'll, I'll take her. And then Jaycee's all like, give me the water's cloth. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I bathed her. Oh, and you were like, you're so, you're so nice. I love you so much. Gosh, <laughs> I'm glad I don't remember that because I would be like humiliated. Like you were like humiliated. You're so nice. So I oh, love so I, you. And I wasn't even humiliated. I was to the point in drug wise <laughs> that I wasn't even humiliated in that situation. That so that nice. I'm I glad though. You. I'm glad that I don't remember because I would be like totally embarrassed. <laughs> and you're like, don't. I'd be like, you can never look at me. <laughs> you're like, don't wash my private. I do it myself. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, TMI. <laughs> I don't think they want to know <laughs> that. It's so funny, dude. You can laugh. Oh. You made me laugh so hard. Oh, but I was saying, I remember trying to text you because that's something I vividly remember was trying to text in general, but I was texting you majority of the time. When I would go to like push the button, I would like push like three over from what I was like for sure I was hitting. Oh, yeah. Like I'm like, I'm gonna hit this. And it was like all the way over here. And I was like, I could like, not you text me like at all. <laughs> like at all. Like it was like, <laughs> like no sense. And I was trying, and I was trying, I was trying so hard, like so hard. And I was getting so frustrated. like. I'm surprised my phone wasn't like broken because I probably would have like thrown it up against the wall. Like I was so frustrated. Cause like, you know, like cause like that was my only. Did I at that time? Yeah. You know, like, oh well, it would would have been broken. Not still. sponsored so by probably, Life Proof, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag <laughs> not sponsored. Non sponsored. <laughs> um, but you know, like, uh, during that time, I couldn't even talk. Yeah. Like, like the words. The only thing I said was. Water. Water. Really bad. And like, I'm well, like, we didn't under, on. Yeah, we didn't understand you like the first four times you were saying water. Yeah, because I, I was thirsty. Water. 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 Like, we're supposed to know. It's kind of frustrating though when you're trying so hard <laughs> to say something and you can't say it. Like, your body. I mean, like, you're. Like, you know what you want to say, but it doesn't come out, yeah. right? Um, but that was hard because I had people, um, I remember calling my aunt at that time because, I mean, it was another, like, serious time that, you know, I could have died. So you kind of call around and tell hey. people you love them. Yeah, and Even you can't really say it. Yeah, but I didn't know that, so I'm going on and on talking to my aunt, and she's like, honey, I can't understand you, and I just started bawling, because I just could not, I couldn't even tell people that I love them, like, because I was on so many medications to try and keep me, like, alive that much longer, and, um, so there's no preparing for death, like, you know, um, you know, JC has accepted that someday you could walk in. Yeah, that's a very, uh, a very real reality for me. Especially, uh, I don't know if people remember this, but when I was on the phone with you and um, uh, you had been alerted to seizure before and then I think someone distracted Colt and then um oh yeah that was that time where the yeah. driver distracted and then i heard i heard your like phone like drop and you drop and then i don't know if people know this but there's like this screen that you you do before you have a seizure yeah. uh, it's all the it's all the air uh, exit yeah your lungs. yeah um and i was like i was going up to denver and i'm like look turn to andy and i was like andy we need to we need to go check on tonight like something's wrong because Colt was like, he rarely barked, but he was like barking on the phone and yeah. pressing Which buttons. Which he's trained to, do, trained to do if I fall or yeah. And so something, he was something like, something bad is happening. He high was, at the buttons and I heard like buttons pressing, like something's very wrong, we need to go like now. And so um, when I came, my, yeah, I was joking with Andy, like, oh, how much is he dead or 
Which we do, we joke about it a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, Back eventually, the coping eventually it's gonna happen, and you know we joke like it. It's better than crying because like we feel like yeah. you know if you dwell on it and be all serious about it, it's not but, uh, a good way to live. I walked in um, and I saw pretty much just you know blood everywhere. I immediately tried to check the seizure, so I was pulse breathing. You were breathing, so your chest was like concave and convex. And then um, I was on the phone with paramedics, and I took a couple pictures with your mom so that you, you know, had uh, yeah memories. Cause I don't, I always tell her I'm like take pictures. Yeah, every it's time. It's like it's not even like I don't even remember doing it though. But like I know, like in my head, I want to see what's going on mm-hmm. because if I live through this, like come on now, I want to be able to see like that I was into it, like. You're not there for that. Like yeah, you want to be able to step out of your body and watch it. Yeah. Now. So it's kind of like medically cool and yeah. like you know you want to know what happens to you and remember it too because like you have all the dates of when pictures or videos were posted or saved or taken and so it's it's a good thing for me yeah. medically wise keep everything documented and everything in my own little way because. I can't remember crap, and it's better than just writing it down in a journal. I mean, I have actual, like, video and picture stuff, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, like, a real big fear for me is, like, because that's happened, now, like, every time I, like, come to come over, I'm, like, thinking in my back of the head, what if, what if, what if, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard on me, but it's just because I care, and, you know, I love you so much, so. I love you, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> touching moment. Um... So, from a caregiver's perspective, mm-hmm. so you said that it's real in the back of your mind, uh, but how do you accept it, but n- you can't really prepare so for it? it? So, for me as a caregiver, um, I know it's such an oxymoron to say always expect the unexpected, because if you're expecting it, then it's not unexpected. Um, but it's just something that I have to always keep in mind when I'm coming over or when I'm helping you with seizures or know you're having a bad seizure day. Um, Like, in my heart, I know that that would break me if it would, if it came to that, if you pass on, you were under my care, and I would feel like I'd fail you or I'd failed in some way. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's it's hard, but I know it's going to happen. And know that kind of brings me comfort. I don't want to say like comfort as in a like, oh, yeah, I'm so relieved. But it just knowing that it's going to happen makes it a lot easier for me to like be able to power through all of the scary stuff with you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So we try and take the outlook of that it is going to happen, yeah. whether it's when they have, what's the word, Ex- you said it earlier, they said that estimated, I would live, estimated? yeah, uh, that they had estimated that I would, um, my lifespan's to 35, so whether it happens then, or whether it happens, say, tomorrow, two weeks from now, a couple years from now, whatever, um, honestly, it's the same with anybody. We don't know how long we're going to live. Just because mine is like a, you know, pretty calculated estimate on, on you know, a for sure I'm only going to live to about this age is, uh, you know, it's, it's a bigger pill to swallow than thinking to yourself, maybe one day I'll get in a car accident and die or something. It's a little, yeah, it's, a, by a bear. it's obviously a little different and it, it only happens to some people and their lives are cut short or whatever. Um, so it is a little bit different, but to think of it, you know, that things do happen yeah. and, you know, why would you just sit there and dwell on that or worry about that instead of living the rest of your life to the fullest? I mean, that may sound like totally like, what is it called? Cliché? Corny? Corny. Yeah, it may sound totally like corny, but the only thing that I really have control on is how I look at what, you know, what 
I'm going to do with my life and how I'm going to act. Like my actions and choices and emotions and all of that are my choice. And instead of being one side, you can be the other. So instead of being mopey and depressed my whole life, I can choose joy and we can laugh about it. We can joke that, you know, I'm going to die or something. And that's so much better than sitting around and actually like dwelling on it. Because I mean, it it is like an everyday reality. Yeah. Like it is a reality for me that I'm not going to live, you know, to 100 years old. But, and I could die any day. And that's a reality. And unfortunately, you know, someone that I love is going to find me. Um, but wouldn't you take comfort in that, knowing that it's someone you love? And yeah, but I feel bad for them. What? I'd rather... Because his I would rather find you than, you know, some stranger or some parent. I feel like I feel like that picture would be like in your brain for the rest of your life though. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Like what if I was like extremely scary looking? You're not really scary looking your eyes beautiful. You're so sweet. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like what if it had been what if it'd been like hours or something and there's like blood or, or like I, I don't know, I would be I'd scared be honest, for you. It would definitely be a shell shock for me, but I would I would feel more comfortable if I was the one. See and she's see and she's thinking of me and I'm thinking of her. So you're thinking, see, I'm like I'm like thinking to her like I don't want her to see that. I don't want her to have to deal with that. And she's like thinking that it'd be better for me, even though I'm gone, but better for me to have somebody see me in that situation that like knew me and loved me and cared for me mm-hmm. instead of you know someone who may not. Well, they're either... just gonna throw you in a meat wagon and I don't. <laughs> what? Meat wagon? Meat wagon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're gonna make, make the sausages, kids. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like it would, it would be more, I would rather find out myself than be told, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, and being, and being told too, kind of, like, because I understand that with my, when my uncle died, um, like when you're told you're like kind of in shock it doesn't even really sink in. yeah it doesn't sink in for like a day or two and then it sinks in and it's like devastating because my my uncle died of bone cancer in november of last year and um for a couple of days i it didn't really like resonate with me you know it, it felt so foreign so alien so surreal I'm like oh there's no way he's dead i even had a dream like uh, the day after she said, you know, um, Uncle Ron died of bone cancer, I had a dream that he was, like, alive. Like, mm-hmm. he was alive, and I was late to something, and I came up, and he was standing there, and, and they was all like, Mom, we're gonna be late. And I'm like, I thought you were dead. That's what I said in my dream. Wow. Yeah, it was really, it was really bizarre. And then, um, it took a couple of days, and then it really set in, and I felt like, like, less of a person, you know? And so, it kind of, it still gets me, you know? But I I feel like it would be, I'd be better off not hearing about it and better off, like, experiencing it. It's just, it feels so I guess it's more, I guess it's more real for you in the moment, but I just feel like, I don't know. Like, you're thinking of me and I'm thinking of you in in a sense. Yeah. That I just feel like you, it would be really hard, like, well, it's like, gonna be hard visually. Me. Like to me, I don't think I would want to find you dead. Like I don't know. Like obviously, if it's better for you, I would want to. But I would. I would be like. No. Would you rather like? Would it's kind of like? Would you rather if you had like a cat? This is getting weird. But if you had like a cat, right? And you went off on vacation or something. You came back and the person that was caring for your cat found it dead instead of you. Wouldn't you feel like kind of? Yeah, I've done that before actually. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel bad though because like like a cat like obviously it was like run over my car or something that would be gruesome. But normally they just like you know curl up and pass away or something. <laughs> That's not as gruesome. 
But like, I would feel like if it was like a gruesome type death, like depending on what kind of death I may have, whether it's, mm. you know, um, 35 or something traumatic happens between now and then, um, I would just feel like it might be, I don't know, like, obviously they tell you to leave the room at a certain point because of how bad it can get. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they don't even let you, like, the only thing you're able to really do is sit outside or look through a window. You can't even be in there. So I feel like, the, obviously, they do that for a reason. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just don't want to, like, traumatize you. I, would, I don't think I'd be traumatized. Well, I would be traumatized if you were dead, but I don't think I'd be traumatized by the sight of it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I know this is a really hard topic and we wanted to share it with you guys though because fuck you motorcycle okay, and we <laughs> it was all quiet and then all fucking loud okay uh, but we did want to share this with you because there's one perspective from caregiver and one perspective from the person that's gonna die um, and I've already been at that line before where I have died and flatlined and coke blued and um, hearing it from your perspective and especially when she told me after the f after I asked if I was going to die and that she was crying really hard I was crying it was really emotional um, just to, just thinking about how like I I did. I had that fear that I was going to die, and obviously I wasn't prepared. Even though you can think you're prepared, you're not going to be at that time in your life. It's like... Scared. Yeah. You feel like you had more life to live. You had more things to say, more things to do. And honestly, you don't want to like have regrets. So that's why I live the way that I do, and it's not that I want to be dangerous or get another brain injury or something, but I want to have fun. I want to experience, yeah, I want to experience stuff. I want to feel normal. And so, you know, I will go ATVing and I will go skydiving and I will do whatever. And, you know, my family's always been like, you need to wear a helmet. And I'm like, <laughs> Me too. And it's not that, and it's not that, like, I don't wear a helmet. Like, I have a helmet. I wear a helmet all the time. She does actually have a helmet. Yeah. But who wants to take pictures with a helmet on? Yeah. Nobody wants to take pictures with a helmet on. <laughs> and, you know, there's things that, you know, you could wear a helmet because you have a history of brain injuries or whatever. Um, but necessarily, or but not necessarily normal people would be wearing a helmet. So you kind of just want to like, just feel normal. Yeah, and not worry about it. Well, like I don't want to, I don't want to sit there and be like, I'm gonna go and ride a zip line, a homemade zip line that's everybody rides without a helmet on. I know I have a brain injury and a helmet would probably be best because even if I fell or whatever, um, and somebody else fell, they probably wouldn't have brain bleed, but I very well could. I'm not going to sit there and think through all that and be like, well, I'm going to wear a helmet just to be safe because I have this health issue. And it's not that I don't care, but the fact is, is if an accident is going to happen, it's just that, an accident. And no matter amount, no matter the amount of preparation you put yourself in, there could be anything that could cause you to die. Anybody, not just me. So, of course, there's going to be times that you just live your life, you know? All you have is right now. Yeah, that's all I have is right now. Sure. Whether I die tonight, whether I die when I'm 35. So all I have is right now, and why am I going to sit there worrying about stuff and complaining and whining and doesn't mean I don't do it. There are definitely days. There are days. There are days. We don't have those days. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that choosing joy is a big part of life because honestly, when something goes down, whether it be health related, emotions related, life related, um, sitting there, I saw this thing that I actually think is amazing. Um, 
it was like a little diagram and it said um, something happens in your life, right? And it says, can you do anything about it? And it has a bubble saying yes and a bubble that says no. And so if you can do something about that situation, so let's give an example. Um, I'm in status epilepticus. So I'm having too many seizures that I could die. Um, can I do something about that? Yes or no? No, I can't. Because I can't stop the seizures. Um, there's nothing that I can do that will help that situation. So at the end of no, it says, then why worry? If I could do something about that situation, so the answer is yes, then why worry? So, if you could do something about the situation that is causing you some kind of stress, why worry? If you can't do something about the situation that's causing you stress, why worry? Okay. So it makes sense either way, whether you have control, whether you don't, whether it's something you can you know, make a choice on or you can't, why worry? That's the only thing that you can control is how you're going to react to the situation. And so I feel like I definitely try to show you all the real side of everything where there's the bad, but I also want to show you the good because there's much good. Like there's a lot of good in my life and I want to show you the good, but I want to show you the bad too, because it's not all good. And I don't want to show you only the good and for people to think that that's how life is when you're dealing with a brain injury or seizures or having a service dog or whatever i want to show you the good and the bad because only good is just lies and only bad is just lies as well because it's not only good it's not only bad it's both it's somewhere in the middle honestly it wouldn't be good without the bad and it wouldn't be bad without the good yeah. um so there's a they're the same. That's the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And so I want to show you a little bit of it all. The super happy side of stuff and the super bad side of stuff. Sometimes it's sad. Sometimes I'm just angry. Sometimes, you know, just being a human where I'm, you know, angry, pissed off or whatever. I just want to watch the world burn. Or, or, yeah. Or, to, or depressed too. You know, there's... There is depression to the, like, we have accepted what's going on, but it's sad sometimes. Like, I think about how um, in 2012 it changed everything. Like, if that didn't happen, what would life be like? I should have could have lived. Yeah. And it kind of makes you sad. It makes you think about how, like, you know, you're not going to have as full of a life. You're not going to, you know live to be old, frail, and in a rocky chair <laughs> from porch. Sip and iced tea. Ice tea. Um, Becoming best friends with your best friend all over again could be a little timer. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. That sounds horrible, but... Oh, I love you. We'd both, we'd both have Alzheimer's and we'd still be friends. Like, that's how we are. We're, like, magnetic to each other. Like, we're constantly together. I mean, we've had some pretty serious fights before. Oh, yeah. And oh, like, yeah, and my brain injury doesn't help either, because I, like, have anger issues sometimes with it, no matter how much therapy I've been through. So, like, we have our fights, but we'll always, we always come back to each other. Cause we but like other you fights. said, you actually said it earlier when we were on the phone, you were talking about how, um, because I'm dying, and because of what I go through, I push people away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you do. You do push people away. And then you try to push me away. And I'm like, uh-uh, you can't push me away. And she's gracious enough to understand that. Um, but I've definitely, I've lost friends, which I've lost friends, first of all, because they weren't real friends in the first place. I think that's an, a thing that I'm very grateful for my brain injury for. And I know that's something you probably never <laughs> hear most people say. I am thankful that I've had a brain injury because I have learned who my real friends are because you don't really know who they are, who your real friends are until something like that happens to you. Exactly. Do you, you know, when someone, a friend or boyfriend or family member has to bathe you and carry you from the couch to the bathroom or- Hold your hair back when you vomit. Yeah and clean up your vomit and blood and wipe your blood on their sleeve 
Um, that was, I remember that. That was an experience I still for sure. That. I still have that sweater. You still have that sweater. Um, but that is something like that you're not gonna have from people that you think are your friends. You know, you may be looking at your life now and you're like, I have 20 friends, but when push comes to shove, you most likely have one or two. Like in reality, you may have 20 like people you talk to, but in reality, you probably only have one or two. People that are you have a, a hand friend, uh, a hand. You have a handful of uh, true friends that will be there no matter what. Ride or die. Ride or die. <laughs> but I'm so thankful. Like my brain injury didn't only just teach me that. Obviously, it wasn't like, oh, I'm thankful for my brain injury. Weeded out my friends. Like I have the good ones, and I have the ones that I won't talk to ever again. <laughs> I was like, they're like, you're in a wheelchair? Not cool, dude. Bye. <laughs> like, thanks. You remember that one uh, time when we were walking into Ross and I forgot to hold the door open for you? And no. you're like, uh, hello. And I'm like, oh, shoot. I just forgot because I don't see you for your disability. And you were like, oh. oh yeah, that was so sweet. <laughs> um, but there's the, oh, man, really? Right now in the middle of a video? What type of alert is it? It's a seizure. Oh, it's pass out. Ah! <laughs> pass out the pod. You, you, tricked, you, you tricked us! It looked like he was pawing there for a second and then he got up, so we were waiting to see what kind it was. Okay, okay, I know. I'll set a timer. I guess I can. Can you set a timer? Yeah. Lay down. Ooh. Lay down. What's the timer? 10. Well, it's 15. Set timer for 15. No, I was saying use that for 10 because 15, I would be passing out. Set timer for 10. <laughs> Come on, you know these things. I can't set the timer for a specific time. Shall I set? No, you okay. freaking idiot. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Your timer is set for 10 minutes. Good. That's well, is that Australian <laughs> Surrey or what? It's Australian <laughs> Surrey. Good boy. Good alert. You're fine. Lay down. So it's pretty dramatic. Yeah. It's okay. We have a timer. That's what we normally do. Um, plus, she's here, so yeah. we're fine. And um, he gets really dramatic during the time, the actual time. Go catch you. <laughs> um, you remember those times when I caught you when you were coming out of your primary care? You actually called me and said you weren't feeling good, so I like ran over and caught you. Like oh, but then you times. had to call the ambulance. And yeah, I called the ambulance. But the paramedics were leaving. And then you had another one, and I caught oh, you. Oh, because I refused. Yeah. Oh, and then the paramedics were like, you're really awesome. That was cool. So they watched me, like, scoop you and, like, slowly put you down. She always knows when I'm going in a seizure. I do. You get, like, it's but, just well, my face. Well, and then there's body posture mm -hmm. and um, the scream. I'm sure. Yeah. You get it your time but so. I mean, I know before you have the before you like exhale all of your air during that scream, like your 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 eyes just get weird. Like I can't explain it. You'd have to like be around you a lot to know. Like my eyes drift or something. There's just it's I just shake it's just weird. That. It's just like you get this face and I know. Mm. It's so like, right before the seizure even happens, you're saying. Yeah, I get okay, this weird thought, aura. I thought you were talking about like. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I know before it even happens. And I mean, Colt is there and everything too, yeah. but, um, man, I kind of am feeling out of it. Um, I'm becoming a seizure alert human. Yes, um, she's, she's my service human and I have my service dog. So we have, so I have lots of help, <laughs> which Garrett, I mean, Garrett is either with me or JC's with me or our family members with me. I'm normally not really by myself much. Um, yeah, unless I'm like at home, but I'm always on the phone with you pretty much. Yep. I don't think um, you ever get off the phone. But okay, wait, let's go back to... Okay, so with my brain injury though, I'm thankful for everything that it's taught me. Like, I was never really a mean person, but I wasn't as compassionate and like empathetic and like understanding of people with disabilities, different things going on in people's lives than I am now. Like, I can literally like instead of getting mad at the bagging lady at, you know, a store, I'm, I'm understanding that she probably had a bad day or something. And I just like, I, I feel like I wasn't that like 
in tune before my brain injury because now I just like understand stuff that people don't really have to understand yeah, in life. Makes you a little bit more empathetic. Yeah, and so I feel like um, obviously that's not the only reason. There's a lot of things that have changed in my life for the for the better, even though there's a lot of like things that were added on that I feel like it it all happened for a reason that God, you know, had that. Um, turned that, you know, tragic event into something good. So, you know, people always ask, like, how do you believe in God when he caused this to happen or caused that to happen? You know, God doesn't cause the bad things to happen to us. He allows them to happen because he's going to turn it into something beautiful. So, whether it's, um, it's going to be all out of it now. So whether it's, um, good boy, it's okay. He tattled on you. He's like, you're not listening to me. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, so we're going to have to end the video soon. So I'm just going to say, um, I know that God didn't cause these things to happen to me, but he turned them into something good. And they made you stronger. And, they, and they made me a better person, stronger as a person, and I've... I would have never been where I am in my life without this happening. And so, um, I'm not, there was, there was a point in time that I was angry at God, but you know, you can't, you can't be angry at God and not believe in him. Cause if you didn't believe in God, who is there to be angry at? So I definitely learned from that. And, uh, you know, it's not that I just like, Poof, woke up from a coma and I was like, you know, I am a positive human being and I am it, gonna go out and get life and live to the fullest. Well, it was a learning experience. It was definitely a learning. I went through the anger, the sadness, what the it, loss. The five stages of grief. Yeah. And the loss, I went through the loss of, of who I used to be. Yeah. So we've accepted what's happening and... Um, but it doesn't mean that we're prepared in any, in any way. And I don't think anybody ever really could be because, um, it's just, <laughs> as you guys can see, he gets really more persistent and stressed out as it gets closer, yeah. but we have an alarm set, so we are okay. He's just very, he gets this way. Yeah. He'll, he'll do it regardless if she's laying down or not anyway. Yeah. He just wants her to Yeah. Know. He gets, even when I'm, even when I'm already laying down, he, he starts getting pretty annoying. No, okay, okay. Here, just snuggle. Just snuggle, buddy. Okay. It's like, oh, this is You're, much better. We're thing. fine. Look at that. Yes, we're okay. He's like, yes. This is, oh, this is much yes. better. Thank you. I can't believe this keeps happening at the end of my videos. I do deal with this a lot during my life, so when we sit down to do a long video, you're going to see him alert the majority of the time. How do you see? Yep. He's paddling on you again. So... Remember, if you guys have a disability or any kind of medical issue um, and it, it bums you out or depresses you, just remember that all you have is right now, so live, yeah. live life to the fullest. So if you have, you know, like a terminal illness or, um, you know, your life span is shortened, even, even if it's not, even if you're living a normal life, you don't know what life may hold for you. And I don't want you to freak out and be like, well, I'm never driving a car again because I will get in a car accident or something. I just, I just want you to realize that today is, and today is all you have. And if you're not disabled, today is all you have. So whether you're disabled or not, today is all you have. So do what you can in the day to be happy and kind and loving. And then when you have another day, be happy for that day too because you never know what's going to happen so um, we love you guys and we're thankful to share everything about life <laughs> okay. once i have this done i'm gonna fucking lay down i'm not gonna i'm gonna crack my head open if we don't get this done because okay. i'm gonna keep trying until we do okay we love, love you guys. guys, and we're thankful for everything you, your supportive, your comments, your love, and just caring enough to, to be curious about these things. I mean, we really do care about you guys, and we're thankful that you guys are part of our lives, and 
we just wanted to share this all with you because it's um you know it's a, it's not a fun topic and it's not something that we want to talk about on a daily basis but it's something that is very real and a lot of people are going through it so whether you know you may be having a shorter life than other people or you're you're a caregiver to somebody who is um we just want to give you guys a big a big internet hug and yes a big internet hug and know that we are here to support you and love you as well and so just leave a comment below and let us know what you're going through what your experiences have been if you have caregiver um, perspective or the other perspective and just you know be open with us if you feel comfortable doing that and we're here for you and I hope you enjoyed the video. So we will. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. <laughs>